Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, let's like, okay. You remember comics? Like the older comics had the crazy ads. We often see the uh, Hostess Fruit Pies ads of uh, you know the uh, superheroes trying to spread diabetes around the world with uh, you know snack food. Uh, but another one was Sea Monkeys. I also remember the ones where they were like sell like you know five thousand army figures in a in a chest with guns. Man, I wanted that so bad. My parents were always like, "No, fuck that. We're not buying that for you." But man, I wanted that. Just like this, this chest. You see, there are these little illustrations, like happy boys, like opening up what looks like a, you know, antique war chest, and just pulling out like the hundreds of army men and stuff. Man, that looks so cool. Anyway, I'm old. Uh, but Sea Monkey ads were another one, and this this writer uh, writes in talking about that. So I haven't thought about Sea Monkeys ads for a while. Sea Monkeys, by the way, are a little bit. They're basically little um, how oh they they're, they're little organisms. Uh, the name is escaping me here. Anyway, they float around in water and. They're always a lot lamer than what you thought. You know, the little picture showed these little kind of Atlantean looking things, you know, having a having town. There's like a, a mom and a dad and some babies and they're like, you know, hanging out and having a good time. And, and uh, then you get them and they're like, what the what what the hell are these? You know, <laughs> uh, it, it, it was always a, a huge disappointment uh, to me. Um, <laughs> I got the sea monkeys. Um, what is it? They're brine shrimp. That's right. That's what it, they're brine shrimp. There's a special name for um, like art uh, and Artem, Artema Artemia. Anyway, they're they're brine shrimp. They don't look like uh, they don't look like the pictures. So it's total false advertising. But anyway, this guy writes in. He says, uh, uh, as a longtime lover of comics, all genres, foreign and domestic, and all minor and a minor comic artist myself, I really enjoy your in-depth looks at the business of comics. Thank you. My question deals with advertising. I know it's been difficult for magazines to get as much print advertising as they used to, but I question why advertising has come to a halt with Marvel, DC, and Archie. I assume they used a service in the past that provided them with ads, and ads were probably sold based on the total multi circulation of all their comics, but probably not readership, since many of the readers would be duplicated reading multiple comics in a month. Yes, that is true. It was all based on circulation. And, uh, you know, those were big numbers in the newsstand because they sold ads off of the initial buy not the returnability. So if a comic was out there and it's like, we boast a 250,000 copy uh, circulation, that was exciting. Now the reality is maybe 60,000 of those comics actually sold and the rest were pulped and returned, but it was a nice, intriguing, exciting number. I uh, got people excited. Um, I was reading some comics in the late 90s, Archie and Marvel recently, and noticed they had a healthy amount of advertising covering movies, video games, candy, sugary cereals, Lisa Frank products, etc. I had also assumed that the advertising at least covered the cost of printing. Yes and no. Um, it, it came and went. For the last so many years, there have been no advertising in comics except for house ads and perhaps an individual company's movies advertising from the parent company. The assumption I made was that circulations were so small that advertising had all but dried up for comics. A few weeks ago, I picked up the third issue of Santos Sisters by American Nature Comics, a fun 13-plus independent comic that sits nicely between Archie and uh, old Jamie Hernandez's Love and Rockets. This particular issue was printed on newsprint with a glossy cover. It was also filled with ads, from comic stores to restaurants. It even had a small classified ads page where some ads looked fake but many real. It looked like Santos Sisters team put in the calls of legwork to fill the book with the number of ads you might find in any standard comic book from the 80s. Did it cover their printing? The comic was still a bit expensive at $5. Still, it made me wonder why larger U.S. publishers not put money into advertising sales staff. You think the video games, movies, Doritos, magic cards would still find an audience in comic readers? And today, also some of the biggest comic stores might want to take out ads in DC Marvel Comics, saying they are an incredible source for DC Marvel back issues, which they did in the past. I worry that so much money is being left off the table to help reduce the price of comics. I believe a price reduction would be help in gaining new readers. Well, sure. Also, it helped with the advertising, perhaps an expiration date if needed, also followed along with a digital version of comics. At least digital comics you could buy individually. What are your thoughts on the issue? Well, my first thought is, why, why not more conversation about sea monkeys in your mail? I'm a little, um, a little disappointed. Uh, but, uh, well, first off, you know, the money, the money dropped. I mean, the, the first and most obvious thing is that the money dropped out. And so the kind of money that they were getting from advertising largely dried up and disappeared. And that, that, made, uh, that, that led to one point uh, which I think happens a lot, which is, is it worth continuing doing this? And, you know, when I said continuing doing this, it's having somebody putting in the light work, as you said, having, you know, having all this happen takes resources to do it. 
And on top of that, particularly with Marvel and Disney, there becomes the question of who sells the advertising and is it, you know, do we have to have worry about putting the advertising through review process to validate that the advertiser is somebody we want to associate with the Disney brand? And like, it, it, anyway, there's a lot of little factors that came in here, but basically what occurred was the money dropped in the ad market because ads in, in magazines, uh, you know, fell and the circulation dropped a lot. And there was this kind of uncomfortable moment where, you know, part of the direct markets, like in order to make this a more compelling product, we're going to have it printed on premium paper. We're going to start to reduce the ads. And for a, for, for a brief window, this seemed like a good deal because the publishers basically got to, you know, eliminate returnability. I saw somebody recently, by the way, post that a lot of people offer returnability in comics. Uh, no, they do not. <laughs> Boom does from time to time. You'll see uh, different kind of moments where publishers will offer returnability on a single issue or during a, a you know brief month of time. DC offered returnability for three months when they announced their changes to their digital plans, uh, mainly because it it you know it was a change to their contract. So they did this kind of an olive branch to have to change that contract of when digital comics are going to get released on their platform. But yeah, that's over now. It's it, you know it's February. Their their returnability is done for DC. So I, I there's a um, I don't know that that that's one of those um, misnomers. Uh, in the comic story video, a bunch of people bring up like, well, a lot of these publishers offer returnability. Uh, not consistently, no. Not even the majority of the time, no. Not even five percent of the time, no. So let, let's you know just stop with that noise. But but anyway. The, the, the circulation numbers dropped to the point that they couldn't demand higher dollars. The ad dollars themselves dropped because advertising and print media just was not as sexy as it once was. And, the, you know, and there was also this factor of, well, the direct market should get a slightly you know, better product that doesn't have ads. And the combination of those three basically caused them to walk away from the business. Uh, I think that it would be an obvious uh, answer to kind of get that Kickstarter and, and going again. I think that we should absolutely, you know, find a way to get advertisers, advertisements flowing in comics. It would help. As you say, it would drive down the price. I mean, well, sorry, it would drive down the cost. Now, whether or not the, uh, you know, the comic companies would just collect on price or, you know, pass that along to the readers is another story. I think the cynic in me knows where that would go. But, you know, that, that I think that, you know, ads in comics particularly if comics continue to steer more niche, makes sense. And here's why. Um, we, you know, one of the advantages, and granted it's not a huge one, but one of the advantages to having a more niche or specialized business is that you're able to really understand your audience. You know who's buying your books. You know. You, you know. And because you know, uh, it allows you to sell far more targeted ads. So you can go and say, basically, I guarantee you that, you know, I, that this money can be made. I guarantee you that this audience is going to look at your book because you know a lot more about your audience and the people who are involved in it. You, you, can, you can very precisely tell who's going to be picking up the book. And there is strength in that to advertisers. It might cause those numbers to boost back up again. But the reality is, um, you know, the money, the money isn't there is a short answer. And the publishers feel like it's not worth their time to go chase it. And I think there's also a little bit of a fear of there'll be a backlash if we start out, you know, offering ads in the comics again, people would bitch like, hey, there's ads in the comic. And, you know, every now and then DC is done, like, uh, I think they did something with Twix, where they put like a half page ad in the book. And it was terrible. And so they've used that as an excuse to go, hey, you know, we, we advertisements wouldn't be accepted by the buying audience. The reality is, I think ad, ads would be accepted just fine. I just think if you're going to take a comic page, you're going to cut it in half and put an ad on the bottom half and have you know regular comic on the top half. Yeah, that's going to piss off people. Or if you're going to make your ad look like a comic and just sew it right into the middle of the thing, so you're reading along and then suddenly you're you seem to be off in a you know adventure to find tampons or something like nobody nobody wants that either. Uh, so you know it, it that's the stuff. So I mean, if you if you make the ad purposely as obnoxious and dumb as possible and then you turn around and say well it doesn't seem like people like this well of course but if you were to put in as I said comic store classifieds you're selling space that way if you were tapping into things that seem like they have a good crossover audience like video games or movies or or game or uh, you know magic the gather whatever it happens to be if you know tsr dungeons dragons used to be a big advertiser within comics 
There was a reason. It was a good crossover audience. So if if you know if you do that, you know you may get some people bitching, but they won't bitch too much. And if you uh, you know if you drop the price a dollar, um, yeah, I think I think people are gonna be like, okay, that's trade, fair trade. Let's do it. Up to you. But that's why the publishers don't, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. It would require looking at the business in a very different way. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. What what about you in the audience listening to this right now? What do you think about ads? Would that be a deal breaker for you? Would you like it? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.